The new spline tools of Cinema 4D Release 17 are there to replace basically all of the spline tools you had for drawing custom splines in older versions like Bezier B splines, Cubic splines, and it's also there to replace the freehand tool that we had. So let's see what we've got in the spline palette. There's the spline pen, sketch, spline smooth, and the spline arc tool. Starting from the top of the list, the spline pen is much like the polygon pen that you already know. You can quickly start shaping out your spline. It's giving you that nice little preview line telling you what your spline will look like when you're drawing. You can interactively tweak tangents and really quickly rough out your spline. If you hit escape, you're committing to the shape and it's there in your editor and your object manager as well. And just like the polygon pen, the spline pen also got that nice dynamic tweak functionality. So if you're hovering above a point, you can simply click and drag it around to tweak the shape of the spline. It's also giving you a shadow curve, telling you what the spline looked like before you started tweaking. So you know exactly what you're changing when you're drag and dropping the point around. Same thing happens when you're tweaking tangents. It's giving you a shadow curve, telling you what the spline was before you started tweaking. If you hit shift, you can also break tangents and adjust them independently from each other. A nice little functionality is if you double click a point, it's resetting the tangents to its default state. Double click again. It's changing the interpolation to a hard interpolation. Double click again. It's cycling back to soft interpolation. Another nice thing that we've got with all of the spline tools is it's not only recognizing points of a spline, it's also recognizing edges. So if you're hovering above the edge between two points, you can also tweak an edge, which gives you a very quick and intuitive way of tweaking your spline shape. If you want to continue drawing from either end, what you do is you select the end point of where you want to continue drawing and then just continue drawing. Same for the other side, you hit the end point and you continue drawing. And if you reach the point of the other end, what it does, it's closing the spline for you, giving you a closed spline. If you hit control, you're going into a dynamic knife mode, letting you insert points into the, your spline really quickly. There's also a right click menu which gives you some more options like this connector point, which is just opening the spline at this point, setting the start point here. Or you can also right click on edges and for example, kill an edge to just remove it from your spline. The options for the spline pen is you can set the type. Like right now I'm drawing a Bezier. You can change it obviously to all the other spline types there are. You can choose if you want to edit the tangents only, lock the tangents rotation and the length, and most interestingly, create a new spline. Create new splines is off by default. So if I start drawing another spline and another spline, and maybe even another spline, it's not giving me more spline objects in my object manager, but it's adding those splines as segments to the spline that is already there. If you don't want that, and if you want to use the old behavior with the old spline tools, you can create a new spline. And if you create a new spline, it does what it says. Now I've got two splines in my object manager. Delete all of that and on to the next tool, which is Sketch. Sketch lets you really quickly rough out a spline. It's replacing the freehand tool that was there in older versions only that it comes with some new fancy settings like stroke smoothing, for example. If you bring that up, it's doing a lazy mouse behavior that you maybe know from sculpting. It's smoothing out what you do with your brush. And even if you're drawing in really rough and edgy kind of ways, it's still smoothing the spline, giving you a nice and smooth curve. Sketch also got a radius setting that you can adjust either using the slider here or you can middle mouse click and drag your mouse to adjust the size, the radius of the brush. And what that radius does is it's recognizing if a spline is in that radius and continuing drawing the spline from there. So this really is what sketching is all about. You continue your spline. It's very easy to draw very 
complex shapes really quickly by just continuing. If you did something wrong, you can continue, then continue from there. A very nice and quick way of adjusting your splines. Sometimes even with strokes moving on, the spline is a bit too edgy and you want it even smoother. For this, you can hit shift and you're going temporarily to the spline smooth tool. You can paint over your spline, smooth it out. And this is basically like sculpting. You're smoothing your spline, going back by releasing shift into the sketch tool, continue to draw, maybe hit shift again, smooth that out. And it's a very nice and easy way of getting very, very smooth splines exactly the way you want them. If you don't want to hold down shift all the time to go to the smooth tool, you can, of course, activate it as its own tool in spline smooth. Now you're in smoothing all the time. You can smooth out your splines, make them nice and flowy, so to say. And if you take a look at the attributes of the spline smooth, you can see despite its name, it's not just smoothing. It's got some more functionalities that are a bit like sculpting once again. For example, you can flatten a spline, drawing here, making it really flat all the way, basically making it linear between the points that you've drawn. You can add some randomness to a spline. You can go into a pull brush, which is very much like sculpting now because you can simply take that spline, pull it out, pull it around, make it just the way you want it. If you want to go really fancy and motion designery, there's the spiral tool, which does what it says. It's creating spirals in your spline for wavy kind of shapes. You can inflate your spline and you can project it down onto geometry, which is really cool too. It works a bit like the function project that you can find in mesh, spline and project, only not as a one click command, but as a brush where you can paint. So you can, from the viewport, you paint down, it's projecting onto surfaces, which is really cool too. And now the last tool, delete that, get a blank canvas again. And finally, a quick look at the spline arc tool, which lets you draw arcs by click and dragging and it's creating circles for you. That's basically what it does. Arcs, complete circles, half circles, and it's continuing. You can interactively change the size of the circle, make it bigger and smaller. Keep continue adding circles until you've got that really, really fancy shape going on. There's not nothing much more that you can do with the tool, but if you're looking for really organic, flowing, curved, kind of shapes, you might want to look at the spline arc tool, really perfect in doing just that. So that's the four new spline creation tools that we've got, but we don't stop there. If you look all the other way to that palette window, there's some more stuff going on here and that's completely revamped spline booleans that we're going to look at right now. We already had Boolean operations for spline using the spline mask generator in older versions. Now we also got that as a command that we can click for really, really quick operations. If I just want to subtract that circle from the rectangle, all I do is I select it to go to the spline Boolean operations, which can be found in the splines palette and for example, do a spline subtract to have them subtracted from each other. There's also some enhancements to the Boolean operations compared to the spline mask. For example, I can subtract more than two splines. So if I've got that other circle down here that I want to have subtracted from the rectangle too, I select all the three of the splines, do a subtract, and it's subtracting the circles from the rectangle. What spline is the last one? What spline is left over is defined by which spline I selected last. Maybe you notice that a new thing in the objects manager is there's a brighter yellow 
selection indication and a more darker, more orange selection indication. The brighter one is the object I selected last. So if I select the rectangle last, do the spline subtraction, the rectangle is the object which is left over and the circles are subtracted from the rectangle and not the other way around. Undo. Another improvement for the spline booleans that we've got is right now all the splines lie perfectly in one plane. Maybe I don't have that. Maybe one spline is moved a bit forward. Maybe the other spline is not in the same plane as well. And maybe that one is even rotated and twisted around and not in the same plane at all. Let's just try if the Boolean operations still work. I select the circle, I select the rectangle, do a subtraction, and it is doing the Boolean subtraction, even though it's not in one plane, in three dimensions, which is really cool, and we couldn't do that before. In terms of operations, let me just undo. In terms of operations, there's subtract, union, and or intersect basically everything you want from boolean operations and one last cool thing now that we've got those nice click and ready commands for boolean operations of course they put it into the spline mask as well so if you don't want to have a just a click command but a generator which dynamically does boolean operations on your splines the spline mask was updated with all the new features it's got and or intersection as well as modes which it couldn't do before and it's also possible to use the spline mask not only on planes but also in a three-dimensional way of doing boolean operations on splines so now you've got to choose if you want to have it dynamically as a generator in the spline mask or if you want to have it as a command right here which is very nice one more thing i'd like to show you regarding the new spline tools and that is the support for polygon snapping in three dimensions as well this is a character from ike sponsor's latest animation in the film she's wearing a crown made out of seashells much like the Native Americans are wearing and in order to get a layout going for this crown what we did is we used a sketch tool to sketch splines on her forehead and then have a cloner clone shells onto that spline and in order to get that working it is very very great that the sketch tool is fully supporting snapping so if you enable snapping and you make sure that polygon snapping is switched on when you're drawing a spline with the sketch tool, it's actually sketching on the polygons it's finding beneath the cursor. S um, so if you take that spline, bring it into a cloner which has the seashells underneath cloning it onto the spline, you can use the sketch tool to really, really quickly lay out all the shells on her forehead get a design for the crown going and you can even sketch on top of the other shells it's a really really fast algorithm behind it it's not getting slow or anything you're sketching and you're sketching and you're building up layers and layers of shells on the surface and as polygon snapping is on you're making sure it's actually on the surface and even all the other tools are supported like before i hit shift to quickly go to the smooth tool i can smooth out all the splines have them rearranged then continue sculpting well not sculpting it feels like sculpting but what i do is i'm drawing splines onto a surface using the sketch tool and the snapping makes sure it's actually on the surface and it's re working really really great and also very fast and that's all there is in a rough overview to the new spline tools which are really a great addition to cinema release 17.